Okay, I think we're going to get going. Uh, let's see. We are missing Dave and David. Uh, is that it? Everybody else is here. Uh, Dave, uh, David Drake said he'd be perhaps a little late, and we don't know about the other David. Is that right? So welcome to the uh, Wednesday, April 26th, meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. As always, we begin our meetings with general public comment, and I believe we have one, two, three folks here to speak. Uh, so, if someone would like to come up. Thank you for coming for Lisa Clausen. I live at 35 Harrison Avenue in Northampton. Um, and I know that you're taking up other business tonight, but just here to say I, I can't stay for the full meeting, but um, look forward to continuing to work with the committee or subcommittee if that's how you choose to um, start looking at ways in which to address wage theft issues um, regarding the CPA funds. And uh, um, I'm very open to a variety of different approaches um, that could be taken on it and look forward to having a further conversation and um, happy to participate in future CPC meetings or meetings outside of the full committee, whatever works for you. Thank you. So again, Lisa, before you sit, um, and for other folks speaking to the wage theft issue, our agenda, our agenda this evening is to uh, discuss the funding recommendations for this cycle. After that, if time allows, we will begin the process of discussing wage theft and, and how we're going to go about that. So all of you are welcome to stick around for that, but whether we get to it or not is, uh, is uh, we'll, we'll just have to see how time goes. But uh, thank you. Sure, and um, I'm here with George Schroeder, who testified previously, so he's choosing not to, but is just here again, his presence and support of the issue, um, who's a Northampton resident. And uh, but neither of us are able to stay for the full meeting, um, but again, are available in the future. Great. Thank you. Thank As you. always, thank Bye. you so much. Thank you. Hello. I'm Elisa Klein, 18 Chestnut Avenue in Leeds. I'm a city councilor for Ward 7. Um, and this it's great for me to stand behind this podium and speak to you because I usually am sitting there and I, I get really nervous when I come and speak to bodies like this. So it's good for me to remember that when people come up and speak at city council. Um, I just wanted to, I know that you might not get to even addressing the wage theft uh, issue tonight, but I did want to offer some comments as one of the original co-sponsors of uh, the wage theft resolution and the order that the city council passed. And we also did a lot of work with the, um, with the mayor and the city solicitor to have the mayor's executive order uh, shaped. We're still working on kind of reshaping it, but um, just so that you know, I've been involved with this at that level for quite, quite a while. Um, so, because I get nervous, I actually wrote something out. Um, as a city, we collect taxes and obligation of every resident. We use these funds and state funds that also come from the taxpayer, of course, to pay for construction projects and to pay for community preservation projects. That's where you come in. Um, people do the right thing and they pay their taxes. It's the city's obligation to do the right thing with those funds, just as we are doing the right thing when we commit community preservation funds to projects. Um, why would we allow contractors and subcontractors to essentially steal money from the people that they employ? Why would we not hold them accountable for doing right by their employees and paying them what they are owed for their labor and in the construction industry in particular, their very hard labor? Um, as a city councilor, I have an obligation to ensure that we're doing right by constituents' tax dollars. I want to ensure that the people we are paying to get jobs done are being treated fairly and that constituent tax dollars are not being used in fraudulent or unfair ways. So I think you know, you've probably heard from Lisa that Harvard has a construction policy research center, and we know from that research that they produced um, that one in four construction contractors in the state misclassifies their workers so they don't have to pay taxes on them. And the repercussions of this are twofold. 
the first uh, thing that I think is a really significant repercussion is that workers are unsafe in their jobs because it means that the contractor isn't paying for their workers' comp. Um, yes, right? Is that, that is correct. And the second major repercussion is that um, Massachusetts and local municipalities within the state are losing hundreds of millions of dollars in unpaid taxes, and that's just um, common sense. Um, neither of these consequences is ethically supportable. I don't want to live in a city, much less be a, a legislative person in a city that doesn't uphold the basic ethical principles of ensuring the safety of workers who work on our, on our municipal projects. And the people who's, who do business here, I can't read my own typing, sorry. Um, we also know that it's not uncommon that contractors in the construction industry don't pay their workers their full wages, including for overtime, or sometimes even pay them at all. Um, when Councillor Carney and I, my fellow sponsor of uh, the original wage theft resolution, um, we did as much as we could by working with the mayor to create a wage theft order for the city's procurement process. I think you probably know about that for services and goods. Um, we wrote a resolution that condemns wage theft and we passed an order regarding wage theft for the businesses that the city council has jurisdiction over in granting licenses. But it's up to you, the community preservation commissioners, to address the issue of wage theft on CPA funded projects. It's up to you to provide financial disincentives for contractors to allow, who allow wage theft to be carried out. Hmm. Um, it's up to you to let the contractors working on CPA projects know that Northampton won't abide by stealing from their workers and that there are financial repercussions if they do. Um, so as you can tell from my slightly garbled writing, um, I am here to encourage you deeply to consider um, developing some really strong language and clawback language, I would suggest, for uh, any contractors that are receiving CPA funds. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Anyone else with general public comment? Again, thank you, the three of you, for coming. And again, you're welcome to stay uh, and to see if we get, but we will, uh, at least Lisa, you and I are continuing email contact, I, and I'm sure you are with Sarah as well, so let me know. Thank you very much. Okay, next on the agenda, as always, is the approval of minutes. Sarah sent us the February, I can't remember the date. 15th. February 15th uh, minutes for that CPC meeting. Is there a motion to approve? A second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? And opposed? Okay. Uh, chair's report. Believe it or not, I do have actually a few things to talk about quickly. Uh, the first is, for those of you that don't get the Gazette, um, we've been really getting great publicity lately, we being the city and, and, and the project. Um, Historic Northampton is just uh, all over the news. I think the two new co-executive directors are, are just so active and really taking it to a new level. And, and uh, between the letters to the editors and the articles all mention CPC and how they couldn't do it without us. And it really puts our work and our, our funding in a very positive light. So that's, that's been nice to read. Um, also, Broadbrook Coalition, who is a uh, master, mistress of good publicity. Uh, they've been on the front page as well. Um, one with the, uh, the the new trail work mm -hmm. on the Haydenville line. What what is that property called, Sarah? The, uh, Beaverbrook name? Broadbrook. Beaverbrook Broadbrook. Um, so th that was nice to nice to see that article. And then um, Jack and I had a nice Sunday afternoon at the dedication. Mm -hmm of the new boardwalk and new uh, bridge. Uh, and I think there were maybe 30 people there, something Board like Sanders, that. Yeah. Uh, Cocott, um, uh, the conservation chair, uh, Bob Zimmerman, who's the president, spoke. So again, they really bring out a lot of people. And, and, and if you haven't gone there to see the new work, it's, 
one, it's amazing from an ecological perspective to watch the march of, uh, of cattails mm -hmm. as a lake becomes a pond. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Cattail marsh. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be funding them every few years to extend the <laughs> <laughs> road. But they do a really nice job, and I, I think BBC is such a wonderful asset to our, our community. The third thing is that, um, and some of you may have read this as well, is that um, thus far, East Hampton, Hadley, and Northampton uh, have, have, are three of the communities mm -hmm. that have set aside money for the renovation of the Hampshire County Courthouse. Mm -hmm. uh, East Hampton, uh, they asked for 45,000, they contributed 25,000. They said, I'm curious to see if that makes sense for city council. I think it's May 8th or May 10th yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. The mayor was opposed mm -hmm. to it. So, and again, like us, they they are a recommending body. Um, so we'll we'll see. There are three towns that are on the docket: uh, Belchertown, Pelham, Southampton, who have yet to vote. Um, so that will be in continue to be interesting to watch. How much did that make the group? 10,000 was it, I think? I'm almost sure it was 10,000. He's tempted 25. And then we were 100, is that right? Yeah, it said that they were 200, but um, they were, in, they were in, incorrect in that. Um, so, uh, so that was interesting. And that is all for my chair's report. Uh, so before we begin discussing funding recommendations for this round, Sarah's going to once again take us through a little financial review so we know what what we have at stake. So we have, uh, not taking the reserve accounts in total, which is basically a little less than $80,000 expense. And once again, can you walk us through what how that is at can be allocated? Uh, 15,685 of that is undesignated, so we can do whatever we want with it. 44,000 is in the historic reserve, and 10,000 each is in the open space and affordable housing reserves. And if, um, if the committee does not decide to fund any open space projects this round, we could change one of the orders from the previous round to, to take that out and put it back in undesignated funds. Did everybody get that? Mm -hmm. Yes. So our, spun, our, our spending is way above, but this was a late correction just to account for additional state funds. Great. We can mess with that if needed. Great. So thank you for that, sir. And just while we're at it, I, I, I don't think this is deviating from the agenda, but I don't know if folks saw the status of active CPA projects over the years, can people get that with Sarah Sands mm -hmm. or a late, a late email? No. no. Uh, well, there are one, two, three, four, uh, four projects dating all the way back to the spring of 2009 um, where funds are still remaining. But again, correct me if I'm wrong, Sarah, because they are sort of in house projects, they have not had to come back to us. That is correct. So uh, unlike yeah. a contract which turns into a pumpkin the day the contract expires, uh, MOU do not do that as long as any associated contracts for outside vendors are still correct. However, thanks to, was it you, Chris, or the other David, someone uh, asked for an update so we know what is still outstanding there. Uh, and uh, it comes out to about, what, 37? Uh, there's still the the state hospital fountain is still not billing much. I mean, there's sixty-eight thousand. Yeah, that one's out. under contract, but it hasn't been billed yet, so it looks like there's more remaining than there really is. Okay. Brian. Yeah. I, I, can you articulate a little bit about the two things that have to do with the Northampton Canal grading? Like that's before my day, as it were. Sarah, you want to talk about that? Uh, so that is the, uh, that's, no, I didn't. Retaining wall, your veterans. That. So the second one, so the first project in the, the New Haven and Northampton Canal Greenway, that is a bike path project for this uh, this section down here that runs from the parking lot that way. Okay, um, okay. 
So there's 27,000 remaining to fix, the, and that's to fix the wall that looks like it's going to fall on the bike path. Um, but this goes is, past the felt building and that kind of stuff down that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got so it. Um, mm -hmm. we're trying to work out an agreement with Mass Electric, but that's a lot more difficult than it, you would think it is. And then the next project I said was the the same one. That should be Florence Field. So that was a $1.2 million project, and there's 10000 I was so thinking. It's, it's basically okay. just what I've done. Everybody sleep through a $1.2 million project. Yeah, that's right. Didn't we just explain that? That makes a whole lot more sense. Florence Field was the athletic field. No, the one we extended was Grove Field. My bad. Oh well, good, the Davids have shown up and we are uh, Thank you. And thank you for asking a clarifying question there because all right. Anything else on this active CPA projects and Sarah you keep us abreast as the funds get spent mm -hmm. or not. Uh, and you're not concerned about some of these that have or have been or eight years old now. Yeah, and they're all moving forward and they've been building fairly now, recently so. and are progressing. So I, I don't have any particular concern about it. <coughs> so, Great. With the yeah. hospital fountain, there was the whole issue with mass development and the land, and is yeah. that been resolved? I, the last I heard uh, at the beginning of this week is that mass development's attorneys are putting together the final deed for the transfer. Wow. So we finally should be able wow. to take control of the park, right? Fingers crossed. Any other questions for Sarah or comments about these active CPA projects? Okay, so remember how difficult this meeting was five months ago in our uh, final round of 2016. We have uh, far fewer projects uh, this round and now is when we will do the funding recommendations. So we have four to remind us. We have four projects. The Conservation Commission Fund, which is asking for 40000 The Hampshire and Expansion, which is asking for 500 right? Am I looking at that right? Uh, 500000 uh, The Northampton Fair so Housing Assessment, which is asking for 20000 and then remember the small project, um, the Lathrop Invasives, which we bumped up, uh, who was asking for 3000 So that becomes a total of $563,000 in requests. Did I do that right? I think so. And we have uh, a little bit under 80000 for this site. So I'm guessing that perhaps makes our job a little bit, a little bit easier. Uh, nonetheless, um, how we've done this in the past, and it seems to have worked, is that we begin by our shopping cart, putting things in, and then moving our shopping cart down the aisle with four items to do as we see fit. And at the end, once we get to checkout is when we uh, actually uh, do, a, do a final vote. So it's almost like taking two votes. Uh, perhaps also we can, as we discuss the projects, we can also look at conditions, because I think that's helpful. And in fact, if we fund some of these, we may want to put a condition or two on them. Uh, so in no particular order, however, I thought maybe we'd start from the smallest ones to the largest ones if that makes sense or would you like us to are you in a rush out of here no do you no. care i just it seems to perhaps make sense to wait on the uh on the hampshire expansion if that's all right and i take, take too much energy. Uh, so let's begin with the uh the invasives on uh, on lathrop um, and again i guess the motion is to put it in the shopping cart and then we'll get back to a formal motion after. Isn't that how we've done it in the past, I think? Uh, so does someone want to make a shopping cart motion for the Lathrop? Uh, sure, uh, I move. 
can move <laughs> to put the Lathrop and Bases project for three thousand dollars into the soft shopping cart subject to some increased signage about for public parking and access. Okay. So that's actually both a financial thing as well as a conditioning. Yes. Sorry. It is. Is that's all right. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, discussion. Well, you've already, I recognized before I got here, you've already dealt with doing the same sort of thing previously, which is precedence of some kind. Somehow or another, it's almost no money, but I'm just not particularly in favor of it. It feels like such a private place. It's just my personal opinion. Uh, I've been giving that some thought and um, went back and sort of looked at what the requirements are and sort of clarified for myself that, um, that, that the CPA statute doesn't, allows uh, private open space as long as you've got a conservation restriction, which, which this would have. Um, the, the, the possibly limiting part is the anti-aid amendment, and that doesn't really require that it be public space either, but it requires that it be for a public good or public purpose rather than a private benefit. So I was thinking of trying to figure out whether I thought this was really a private, primarily private mm -hmm. benefit or primarily public benefit. And um, having gone to the site and seen where it is and seen the difference um, between the, the, the land where they, they've done the work and the mm -hmm. land where they haven't and yeah, seeing that it's, that it's right on a brook and mm -hmm. the stuff is just going to spread into other land and other conservation land um, and it is part of a larger area that's, that's been conserved. Um, and given the amount of uh, activity contributions that have been made towards doing this, um, I, I, I'd be prepared to, to support it. I, a, I think that. there is a public good that it really is preserving <laughs> open space, um, beneficial species, beneficial habitat, and there is a benefit from that. Other folks? I would, I would second that's very well said, Linda. I, I, I agree with that. Also with the idea that they're leveraging our money with donations and work of their own and, and money of their own and actually setting an example for other groups that do set aside uh, conservation land and uh, then actually do some stewardship of of what they set aside. So I think it sets a really good example for other groups that want to take care of the land they have in, in, in conservation. Um, Linda, do you want to speak a little more to the condition that you set and just flush that out a little more? Um, I don't think I'm prepared to tell them what to do. I think it would be along the lines that they need to do public signage, which is approved by the committee. Before we release the funds? <coughs> Before we release the funds, yeah. I think it needs to be developed with them. I don't want to tell them what they have to put up. I'd like to hear their proposal, which <laughs> they seem to be looking for us to do it. I think they ought to come up with some proposal in the first instance, and we should do it. Uh, who else did the site visit? No, I, I thought Linda did uh, a really bang-up job of laying the case out for them. Um, I, I Just sort of tangentially, um, what's the requirement that we put on um, all recipients with regard to acknowledging CPA? Sarah? Uh, the, the standard one is that they have to acknowledge the CPA funds in, on their website and in any press releases and materials. Um, signage is a little bit different for each project. Okay. I'm, not one, I'm wondering if that 
nudges them in the right direction, that requirement. I mean, obviously we want something more extensive, like where is it would be a good one. Um, but, you know, if they're going to be doing signage for us, that may direct them sort of more, get them headed in the right direction. Any other comments on this one? Yes? No? So again, our, our preliminary vote on this motion is to put it in the shopping cart, not to, not to check out. Uh, so all those approved of $3,000 to Lakeflip to for basis removal with the condition that, that we can further refine that they do some sort of public outreach to make us or Northampton folks or other folks aware that uh, we have access to the trails and that, that, that there is public access to trails. Uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? So that's an eight to one on the shopping cart. Okay, so moving right along to the Northampton Fair Housing Assessment uh, Report or whatever we're calling that, uh, plan, I guess. Uh, is there a motion to put that in the shopping cart? I'm gonna put it in the shopping cart for $20,000. Second? I'll second. Uh, discussion? I have a question. I think, as I remember last time we spoke about this, we left it with a question about whether this was sort of part of the you know, operations of city government that we shouldn't be funding. Did we ever get an answer to that question? They think we should. <laughs> I'm sure they do, but <laughs> I guess. I, Whether it's a category error or not is irrelevant, I suppose. It sounded like the only place it could come from was CDBG administration, but there's not enough in CDBG administration to cover it. And it hasn't been line item any place else in the city budget. At this point, at least. Yeah. Is that, are you concerned about that? I'm concerned because this is not, it's, it's not a project. I mean, this is not something that the citizens of Manhattan are. Feel like this is a project that the CPA is funding. It's, I understand the public good of it. Just, it doesn't ring true to me as, as, as in line with the other kinds of things that get funded. Um, Are we going to actually discuss this now? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to? Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I, I want to explore this further for that very reason. I think that um, one argument that you could make is that um, the material provided by by the work funded um, is going to make a difference in in how uh, the city and and this committee approaches um, future requests for for funding for housing. Um, just in my interactions um, over Hampshire, uh, the previous version of this was, was used as a source for information regarding demands for housing and, 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 and uh, the amount of housing that is uh, you know, classified as, as uh, affordable and, and, and how it breaks out dem demographically and, and by income. Um, and that was useful information for me to get a better understanding of, of the, the population that, that Hampshire in and, and like projects serve. So I, I do think that even if it's not directly um, supportive of, of, of that kind of work, I, I, think it, I, I think it can be a really useful piece of information. Um, so I just want to raise that. But I'm not, I, I'm, I'm still not convinced that that tips it over if we're going to be really hardcore about not funding um, routine government functions. And I think I'd like to learn more about um, what the limitation on that actually says, because I'm not, I mean, I know it's out there, but I'm not sure what it, exactly what it says. As far as CPA goes? Yeah. Uh, so the exact wording is CPA funds shall not be used to replace existing operating funds only to augment them. So you couldn't use it to fund a, something that 
you can use it to fund the operation of a school or operation of a city department or something like that. Um, okay. So I, it seems similar to the to a playground construction project almost, where it would yes, it would be great if the city funded this, but, but they're not going to. So I. But, I think, but this is a requirement. Yeah. Yeah, that's whereas the a city a playground is not. I mean, I think it's it's fine under CPA, but the committee could certainly decide not to fund it because I think it should be funded for other city means. But I don't think there's any there's any legal issues with deciding to fund it. If the city council, I assume they were asked for this money. I don't know they were asked before we were. Um, they would have they would say, well, why was the administrative portion of the CV? G funds not enough for Northampton if it was enough for the other municipalities to cover this cost. And I don't feel that we're getting that kind of, it just seems out of balance for the kind of things that we're funding. It, it seems so tied to the operating of, of this agency within the city and, and if it's truly required and we don't fund it and it's truly required, the city will fund it. That's how I feel about it, I guess. And I just feel as I, Backing up, I, I know it's not, a, it, just, it just doesn't feel right to me to people who pay property taxes that go to this CPA fund. It's, it's just not the right thing to work me, I suppose. I understand all the good things about it. I'm not arguing any of those. Um, all right, Jeff and Linda as housing folks. I, I think one thing that was most impressive to me in the proposal was all the letters in the back of the proposal from basically every um, affordable housing organization similar that was there. I, um, I also think it's interesting that uh, I know the mayor that tonight and tomorrow is actually having uh, um, community meetings on the city budget. Um, it's it's not clear it's it's not also not clear to me as a housing advocate that this isn't at least in part something that ought to be funded out of the city at the same time i mean i'm wondering if it's a twenty thousand dollar request we have so little money to work with i'm wondering if if uh, a middle ground might be to fund 10 of the 20 and ask for these clarifying questions that um, you said, you know, I assume the city council was, was asked ahead of time. I don't know the answer to that. Um, and try and clarify that. I think it's a, I think it's a, a very valuable study that's needed. Uh, I think it's, but I'm also new on this committee and relatively new at least, and I'm not sure of the, the past history for requests like this that I, that are there other requests that, uh, that at least partially have the appearance of this is something that might be a um, line item in the city budget? Sarah, can you think of, yeah, or David, I mean, can you think of other? That we funded or that Well, we, we turned one down. Right, the GPS system is one that we, yeah. 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 For that same. Yeah. For the same reason. Yeah, I mean, I guess anything could be looked at that way, and a, a playground could be, uh, Softball field development could no, be, but those you're, not, but the city's not absolutely required by any federal mandate right. to provide any of those things. I and and I think that's the difference with this project. I would think the housing study has is, is wide ramifications beyond the GPS. So yeah, I don't think it's the same. Uh, uh, I have a this and that on the one hand. On the other hand, kind of there there's there is something that. Um, does feel like perhaps there was just an assumption that that uh, CPA funds could be used for this, but that may be partly of the committee's own making, and I wasn't really here then either, but there have been similar kinds of studies, um, related sorts of informational gathering, which I think are enormously important. Um, and needs, and needs to be done. I was a little skeptical about this tool, but I think Peg convinced me that it's actually, as tools go, a good tool. Um, so now we're at the point where they need it. 
uh, they don't have the funds available for it, what are they going to do? And I, and I feel like perhaps we've kind of enabled um, this request and I feel more comfortable doing something like the $10,000 perhaps and um, indicating that in the future it's something that the city should be looking to see if it can possibly fund itself. But I don't want to leave the city in a lurch. There's, there's uh, time limits for producing this. It is important information. Um, and they may have been lured into thinking that this is something that the committee would be receptive to by the way the committee has, has acted in the past. And? I think there's no doubt that it's a, it's an excellent planning tool. I mean, I think it would be, there's, there's no doubt this is information that's needed and can be used. I guess we obviously have issues of how you deal with opportunities. Um, we, we were very opportunistic, that's not necessarily bad, and picking up a lot of open space in the last uh, round, leaving us with with relatively little to play with in here, even if there's plenty of things that you want. I guess my question would be, you know, do we think there's $10,000 around, or will the $10,000 just hang on spending, waiting for, you know, waiting for the next thing around when something else could get going? I don't know the answer to that, but I certainly have to put that into the question of sort of half partial funding, you know. Um, there's a lot of money out here not being spent. Um, not that yep. it matters, but I mean, there just is a lot of money out here not being spent for one reason or another. I'd hate for it at this point to have more. That would be my my one concern yeah, I about be, partial funding. I couldn't be convinced for the full funding, but I was I was yeah, I know. feeling the <laughs> hesitation. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I just want to echo the concern on the partial funding because you can't do anything with a partial plan. You know, half a plan gets you yeah. nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. So I think what we, I, I am a, a, a little more inclined to say that I'm not sure it goes in the shopping cart because I, don't, I still don't think we have all the answers. You know, I keep going back into the letter that we got from, from Peg that's supposed to give us a lot of the answers and I feel like we get halfway there. There's, a, there's, a, there's half the information, but we still need a little more. Like, here's why we don't have the money to do it. And there's nothing about what they might have done to try to get more money to do it, other than they need us. So, it, you know, I, I, I still feel like we don't quite have everything we need to answer the question of whether or not this has, there's been an effort to fund this through regular operating funds of some sort or not. Does that make Mm -hmm. that's, which is, I know we're supposed to make decisions. <laughs> <laughs> Other folks speaking on that? I want to reiterate what Julia just said. I mean, it, it really concerns me that this is very slippery slope of funding something that I think is, a, is above and beyond what the intent of, of, uh, of our committee was, was to move beyond traditional funding into things that we would never fund uh, the city because of, of difficult choices. Here we're being asked to fund something that is a requirement. Um, I also have a little concern that fair housing is, uh, and I, I'm still a little confused with this, but encompasses something far greater than affordable housing. Yeah. Affordable housing is part of fair housing. Yeah. But we're funding stuff that is, that is a great study, but I think is it is extends beyond the scope of this committee. Um, it includes affordable housing, but also moves moves uh, well well beyond that. Mm -hmm. Can I speak to that, Ron? Mm -hmm. um, I I'm being convinced by the, your first comment, but that uh, so so maybe it doesn't particularly matter. But I think given the uh, the way economics and fair and and uh, fair housing interplay that there is tremendous overlap, particularly in this city. If this were another city, it might be, it might be a different matter. But in, in this city, I think affordable housing and fair housing become, in most instances, almost synonymous. And I, and I don't think there's that much of a gap between the one 
and the other. And I will uh, defer to your expertise on that, so thank you. Other folks want to speak to this? So the motion on the table is 20000 to the Northampton Housing Partnership to fund the Fair Housing Assessment Plan. Again, again this is a shopping cart or not, but if it's not in the shopping, shopping cart, it does not move on to checkout. So our vote is important here. Um, before we uh, uh, go to vote, are there any conditions that we would care to set on this? I mean, it is what it is without our conditions. Anything that come to mind, housing folks? No, but I'm still, I'm just not quite willing to give up on this because of the importance of it, though I acknowledge um, the validity of your concern, and I'm, I'm just wondering if there is some way to get that answer from Peg, if maybe just trying to give her a Hail Mary to pull this out of, this out um, as to whether there were other whether she did explore other funding mechanisms or not remember a no vote on our part does in no way mean a uh, uh, the group cannot come back and ask again mm -hmm. nor could they I'm concerned about the time yeah and they can come back in an expedited what, what do we call it uh, expedited application expedited application so our voting no does not. But if we spend all our money. Yeah. July, July comes pretty quick. We'll have more then. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go ahead. I, I just wanted to, um, and this is rhetorical, but just something to consider. Um, if we would fund this study when, if this study was not mandatory, would we fund it? And if we would, under those situations, does the fact that it becomes mandatory abrogate our interest in supporting it? That's a good question. Mm. The problem with that, having laid that out there, <laughs> is that the, the, I'm, I'm a great believer in the power of precedent and the slippery slope argument. So. You mean if we fund it now, then the next time it comes around? Or the next time somebody else comes, comes around. around. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I know I, I realized it didn't make it any easier. <laughs> well, it does speak to the is this part of replacing operations. That's that right. It's a requirement does. that more mm -hmm. equates with mm -hmm. it does. operations. With regard to the, is, that it has to happen by some date, have we been told what that date is? That if it doesn't happen by yes, some date? Yes, I can't recall. Let's <laughs> see. Is, um, does anyone remember? But that was uh, there. The housing partnership crack. Their the timeline is they put the request out to the end of August. The request for proposal released September. The consent consult in December. May thirty first, twenty eighteen. That's submitted to HUD. April thirtieth, two thousand eighteen. Is that what we just said? Or May May. So it looks like there it's over a year before it goes out. So they would have the time to make an expedited free application. Yes. And we would have more funds after July 1. Correct. Where we might be able to actually. And we would have time to get these clarifying questions that we don't have. To yes. Answer. It seems to be the case, right? Yeah. Although from my point of view, it has nothing to do with the amount or the fact that we have this many funds. I mean, it's really a, because I think we can. I guess it depends what else we do, but it really is more of a content thing. I mean, if it's truly that there's $8 million that's coming from the federal government, if we lose, if we don't do this, I'm sure that the city will find a way to find the $20,000. <laughs> this is a $7 million, eight, 900, and 80000 difference. Maybe you went that way. You know, but we don't have that information, and I think that's Well, it's a precedence, too, and I think that's a yeah, very interesting question. David, you've been remarkably quiet this. Is there anything you would care to offer? You're, you pointed out the distinction between fair housing and affordable housing. Um, I've made the argument in the past that we're not supposed to fund uh, city budget items. I think that's not only a, due to the letter of law, but to the sort of the common law underpinning of what the 
CPA is supposed to do. Um, so I, I, I think that point's a serious one. We are asked routinely to fund affordable housing projects in the city, and we have proudly done so. Um, the study of affordable housing needs in the city seems like it would inform our decisions going forward. Um, and the absence of such a study would um, deprive us of that of that information. I'm not comfortable going beyond the mandate of the CPC and would suggest that we could, uh, the condition would be that we would fund only that portion that has to do with affordable housing um, as a study. And um, should have been on So I'll stop there. Uh, any other discussion on this? But I won't shake my head when others talk. <laughs> Are we ready? So the motion on the table is 20000 for the Northampton Fair Housing Assessment Plan. There are no conditions attached to it. All those in support? All those opposed? And abstainers? Uh, I guess I'm opposed. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was no way, else. That, so that's a unanimous in opposition for the shopping cart. And uh, Sarah, you are always so um, concise and articulate in, uh, in doing your minutes, uh, perhaps passing on our concerns, or you and I yes. can work on that. Absolutely. If, and I, I talked to Peg a little bit after the last meeting. Think that she was aware that some of these issues may be coming up. Knowing just for her to know, as far as I'm concerned, I think we all will probably agree that this is an important plan and we are in support of the plan. However, uh, our, our concerns we all feel very well. Okay, number three is the uh, Conscom Conservation Fund. Uh, the uh, total Request for that is forty thousand dollars. Is there a motion for a shopping cart? I move that we assign the forty thousand dollars to the conservation fund. Second. Second. Discussion. I'm not sure how we do that given <coughs> the funds that have been reserved. Well, we have fifteen thousand. Uh, uh, we can do what we want. Ten thousand for open space. That would be twenty-five thousand six hundred and eighty-five dollars. Is all that we'd be able to put in. Is that correct? Uh, so we could take three thousand from open space for late term, or we could take it from undesignated. Uh, oh right. So, so three thousand already is. Is late. Yeah. Didn't we say there was some money from the last round that we could have moved around from bucket to bucket, though? Uh, we could. I think it was the uh, bottom. Yeah, we could pull it out of just some of it out of just storage. No, we can't. We can't pull anything out of storage. Um, is it pulling it out of housing? Only got 10000 in there. Uh, historic has to stay as it is. The bog turtle was at that affordable housing component, correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, 150,000. Yeah. Chris? No, I'm good. When we get through the number thing, I'm going to speak on the motion. Okay. Uh, we may have to revise yeah. Jack's motion just mm -hmm. for practical, or Jack, you may have to revise your own. Okay. Tell motion. me what the number is. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we do 3,000 that we have committed for Lathrop. Uh, perhaps it's easier to just keep the ten thousand committed to housing in the yeah, forty-four thousand. Yeah, I don't. 000. Housing, I, I don't think could could change. So if we do seven thousand in open space plus fifteen six eight five and undesignated, that's fifteen twenty two thousand six hundred eighty-five. Is that? Did I do the math right? Fifteen six eight five plus seven is twenty. 22, right? Uh, so, Jack, can you 
All right, that would be my motion then that we uh, approve the allocation of $22,685 for the conservation fund. And a second? Second. Okay, now discussion, Chris. Uh, I'm just, I'm going to move that we put 50,000, minimum 50,000 into Hampshire and project. Um, and I'm gonna go looking for it anywhere I can find it. And I'm gonna be more than happy to um, use use that the request for conservation, the conservation fund is the payer for that. I think we did plenty for the conservation fund back in November. Um, and I'm, I'm committed to finding as much money as I, I can for the Amtrak program. Did, to, uh, to speak to that, is there is is there any historic preservation in the Hampshire? Why, well, yes, there is. Yes, there is. Okay, so it's coming out. Of, it can come out of both. Mm -hmm. okay. That's what I was saying. Historic and designated, actually. Okay, so other uh, other discussion on twenty two six eight five for Conscon. Wayne spoke that the Conservation Commission fund now is at zero. Correct? Sarah? Yeah. Okay. With apologies to Joanne. Um, uh, I think we should put something, um, to respond to what you were saying, Chris, I think we should put something into Hampshire in to show that um, see that the Community Preservation Committee is interested in supporting the project. I think given how far off the project is that another 15,000 or something one way or the other is not going to make much of a difference. It's going to have to be taken up again in another round for any kind of significant funding to go to it. And the open space is kind of a here and now on the, some of the properties that they have options on. Uh, so I think that, to pick up on the comment that was made earlier, I think that's going to be put to use now. And the others is the other, the support for the housing is really an indication of support, and it's going to need to be revisited. And there's time for that. Other folks. Well, I strongly, I feel very, very strongly about the Hampshire as well. So I don't know how that kind of, I mean, if we can't put it in the basket unless we've got all the money for it, then we're really making the decisions at this point, it seems to me. Um, and if we are, then, then we should know that, that's all. At least that's that's the way it feels like because we haven't really talked about the strategy for dealing with the Hampshireian, which is I mean there's strategy with all this with all of this there's no doubt about that, and um, I don't know if, you know what the timing on all of this stuff is and how important it is I mean there there are issues about how important it is to have let's just say ten thousand dollars around so that if there's five thousand dollars in cost that they pay for hard costs, is that what they call it, for some of the uh, land uh, okay. preservation acquisition things. It's a fairly small amount of money um, up through, what, July 31st? I mean, I don't know. Again, we're talking about the, the current year's fiscal year. July you know, 1st. Yeah. Um, I certainly want whatever we can do for the Hampshire Inn to be sufficient that it propels that what they're doing along in a way that when they talk to others they can say look we we've, we've got an interest here I, I'm not sure how we balance all of that out but I would like to make my statement about the importance I feel for that particular piece of property and that particular project which is so I just that's my say I guess <laughs> mm -hmm. Julie? Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with both of you about the, the Hampshire Inn, but the one thing we know is that, it, you know, if you're looking at all the different pots of money that we have, Hampshire Inn includes historic, yeah. and we know exactly how much we have in that pot. Yeah. Hampshire Inn includes affordable housing, we know exactly how much we have in that pot. 
we have some undesignated money, not a lot, yep. and we've already taken a teeny chunk out of open space, but we still have money left in open space. Mm -hmm. So it feels to me like there is an opportunity to do something, and that I think it's so important for us to do something about open space and about the Conservation Commission Fund, using that open space money, because we've seen what Wayne can do with a little bit of money. No, I appreciate to, that. To I do. I do. I just want that whole conversation yeah. before we do this so that I know that that we have some substantive interest in, in Hampshire and yeah. generally speaking, at least I hope we do this. But but so but part of you know I've been sitting here playing with the numbers because part of what I'm doing is starting to play around and say well okay we, we just said three there yeah that gives us seven left <laughs> and how do we now fool you know it's a different way of looking at the shopping cart instead of what goes in it and then mm -hmm. and, and what do we do it's really how do we divide this up mm -hmm. if we want to fund for instance these three things if we were all in agreement how do we divide up what we've got because we've only got seventy nine six eight five and then if, I, and if I wasn't clear I was thinking along similar lines, I think, that the historic and the community housing, which would amount to 54, 50. would go to Hampshire Inn, and then we, we deal with the undesignated yeah. funds yeah. and the open space towards the place for urban conservation. Right, because even if that's what we did, for instance, we're at least saying, all right, 10% of that 500,000, we've done something right. that's 10%. That, that's, a, that's a good starting point. And, and if, you know, again, if we could go above 10%, that would certainly be nice, but I would be really unhappy if we went above 10% and then said to Conservation Fund, good luck until July 1st. Oh, come then. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if this is appropriate or not, but Joanne, do you, do you want to speak, what, what good is 50,000 at this point? Uh, is, it, is it appropriate for me to ask her to, okay. Hi, Joey Campbell, Valley CDC. So yes, we, we need a commitment of some amount of funds because we may be going in for a pre-application in December, assuming that that's the schedule. So having a commitment um, from this committee, a hard commitment, and 50,000 would be a good number. I mean, 10 sounds small, but listening to your discussion um, and then also hearing the discussion that we we would that you would like us to come back in um, for some amount of money in the fall that would help us that we would have the local support going in for the pre-application and based on my experience I haven't been here for you know two years but that most likely this the fall round might get approved by City Council in February kind of maybe January, February, if you go through that process, then by the time, assuming we were invited in for a full application, we would have another commitment from CPA that would show you know, a larger support that would help make our project viable. So 50,000 is an appropriate uh, placeholder, if you will. Yeah, or, that would be or, a nice placeholder. Or start. <laughs> Not that we are making a commitment yeah. at all to the fall, so mm -hmm. you need to know that. that, that we, you know, we don't know what the money is. Our discussion will take place then. So can someone help with the math here? We have 70, let's call it 80,000. Uh, we committed 3,000. We have a committed this in the shopping cart. That's 77,000. If we were to do 50 to um, to the uh, Hampshire Inn, that still leaves us with 27,000. Yeah, 26,685. So we can do, so the motion on the table is to do 26, I'm sorry, 22,685 for, um, for the for the cons comp fund. So no way does that negate the 50,000 that's that we've been. Yeah. Uh, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the, uh, any more discussion on the con on the proposal of the table, which is 22,685 for cons. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, it is unanimous. So you got that 22,685 to Wayne. And Sarah and Wayne will 
work their magic as they always do. Um, okay, so in our shopping cart right now, we have $25,685 spent, which leaves us with what again? 54. 54. And change, right? Or is it exactly 54? $54,000. So moving to the, our last project, the Hampshire and Expansion Project, that has come in at $500,000. Uh, is there a motion on the table for that project? Uh, move we uh, approve $50,000 for Hampshire. For We argue about the number. Okay. Uh, so the motion is the motion is fifty thousand. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion. So um, I came to the fifty thousand number looking at the forty four thousand in historic that we had available to us. Um, if you look at page three of their proposal, there's a fairly lengthy uh, comment uh, section where they discuss the, the, the historic component of it. Uh, which I think we could easily spend forty-four thousand on, uh, and um, I, I like fifty thousand. Well, I like two hundred fifty thousand <laughs> a lot, a lot more. But I like fifty thousand because, uh, you know, yes, these numbers are arbitrary, but fifty thousand is ten percent. Um, uh, the fact that uh, you know we can we can present it in the context of um, a, a very austere round where we went the extra mile to, to do this, I think, shows, hopefully will show more intent than, than the actual money. Um, and coupled with some of the other things, one of the things that uh, the proposal um, notes is that, uh, you know, the cities are, the city itself is, is demonstrating its support through, um, and I don't fully understand how this works, but waivers on the, on the population density um, ordinance or whatever guidelines. 40R. Yeah. He's doing uh, a 40R district. Okay. Um, so, you know, show, putting those things together uh, just hopefully will show uh, the powers that be out there that, that, that there is support um, around here for the project. So, you know, like I said, I'd love to do more. I think, that, you know, if we can go 54, sure, that's great. Um, but uh, I knew that we had. 44 already there, and figure we can close that gap creatively elsewhere. So, um, Sarah, an estimate, like a really gross estimate for what we'll get July 1st, somewhere around a million. Uh, spend minus assuming that I have no way to guess at all on the state match because the box is coming in. Um, uh, so, that it, 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 yeah. and it, so that's totally up in the air. We can at least count on our local revenue, which is say 1.2 million. And of that, how much is obligated in our? And then, our, uh, so, and then we'll have to subtract. Flores, well, uh, Classy Park is going out to bond. I don't have the payment schedule for that yet, but that'll be on council agenda coming up. So probably subtract 750,000. Subtract seven hundred and fifty thousand yeah. from our one point two million. Yeah. Four fifty. That's right. But that's not including any state match of any right. kind. Mm -hmm. What was the? Oh, well, we're not bonding seven hundred fifty thousand per no, year. We have other. Yeah. So that. No, so that's. Um, so it's about. Yeah. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and we don't need a, an exact amount. It's just something for us to be thinking about. So sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. There's a two hundred seventy thousand dollar payment. Is that one? Lawrence Fields is paid off, so it's it won't actually be that much. Or um, so maybe the second round, right? Maybe three hundred thousand. We just saved $450,000. <laughs> yeah. We paid off the project. There's the project. <laughs> uh, 300000 plus 
Pulaski or I, I'm just the, guessing. I have no idea what the payment schedule will be for the this Pulaski Park bond or when the payment will be due. So I'm I'm just guessing. So anyway, that's just a figure of let's say somewhere less than a million dollars. Yeah. If we take. Four hundred thousand from our local match. That's probably a, a very worst case scenario. We'll definitely have the money in that. Okay. All right. So let's go back. Uh, sorry for that digression. Let's go back to the motion, which is uh, fifty thousand for uh, Hampshire and other folks. Want to weigh in on this? I like it. Uh, if we put a restriction on it, or a guideline for when to come back. What we want to see? We can do whatever we want. Whatever We're we the want. CPC. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, just, I, I think they probably, probably do this, but I'd like to see a more uh, developed cost estimate um, based on, I assume, what would be a further uh, take of design development, further uh, progression of the design drawings. Other discussion? Uh, Joanne, thank you for being so patient and uh, thank you. being here for now. Is there anything you'd like to add for us to consider at this point? No, I, 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 I'm pleasantly pleased with what you've had to work with that we managed to get at least the recommendation of that amount, so thank you. I know you didn't officially vote yet. <laughs> And we're good on this. Okay, so the motion is 50,000 for uh, Hampshire and expansion. All those in favor, all those opposed, that is unanimous. And that was 50? 50. And there were no conditions. I'm sorry, Dave, there were no, there were no conditions on that, right? Well, I'd like to see condition of Coming back with the cost estimate. Oh, right. For the, for the yes. next time they come back. Uh, okay. A more developed cost estimate. That was not part of the motion, but we can add that in mm -hmm. in our shop as right. we go through checkout. Okay. So I think we look at it again when we look at the actual paperwork. Correct. In a couple weeks. Right? Yes. Uh, so we are moving uh, out of the aisle and into the checkout. Is that correct? <laughs> yes. Uh, so because there are only four projects and there are only three, one is not in the cart, we're voting on the three that are in the cart. So let's just, do we do them all together? How do we do this? Do we do each one? Sarah, what do we do? We want to take a good remote. We've done them all together. We've done them all together. Okay, so we have 50, um, 55,000. No, I'm sorry, $75,685 in the shopping cart, 3000 to lay throw up, 22685 to the Conscom, and 50000 to Hampshire in expansion. Uh, the, only recommend, the only condition is goes to, um, uh, to lay throw up for some sort of public, no, uh, not fun, public uh, signage. Uh, there is a, uh, David is proposing that a recommendation perhaps go to uh, uh, Hampshire Inn to be more, in, 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 if they come back to us with a future proposal, to explain to us more. No, just to attach the cost estimate to the project. I think it's something that I'm sure they're doing. Great. Julie, put it in um, application. For Lathrop, I had a thought. We have on our uh, city website a, a, a site with all the conservation area maps. They're not on there. Maybe that's what they have to do, is give us a map and put it on our uh, conservation area maps by partner site. Okay. Uh, which, you know, it would in that map they could acknowledge the CPC funding, uh, CPA funding, and then that makes it public. I mean, this is the site I always go to when I forget my way in Sawmill Hill and I'm out there. Mm -hmm. I think that, I, that's a great idea. I think it might be good to also have um, some yeah. signage there. where the trail starts. Sure. Yeah. And, and where to park. Right. I know, those are my, yeah. but. But that's a great yeah. idea. That's good, I like that. Yeah, just, 
it's yeah. um when you're out there and you're lost, huh. this is the go-to for me. As we go through checkout, do we need to have have this specific? Are we good in this or general enough? And so no, that, that's my point. Uh, we can consider all the specific stuff at the next meeting, but I'll right. use the discussion today as the basis to develop. Good the and work your editorial magic on us. Okay, so um, is there a motion for uh, that amount, the 50, uh, I'm sorry, the 50, 55685, right? 75685. Thank you. 75685. Is there a motion? Yes, I, I, I moved to that. Okay, thank you, Linda. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? It is unanimous. Boy, that was like record time. We have never. Is it 10 after 8? <laughs> Let it be known. <laughs> Let it be known that when you don't have any money, you don't have any money. Those things move quickly. Holy smokes. Wow. Okay, so. Um, uh, if time allows, discuss process for consideration of fair wage issue. Uh, can we begin that now? Are people up for that discussion? Um, I think if we want to stick around and, and do that, the discussion I think was not to resolve this issue, but perhaps more to come up with a process mm -hmm. for how to resolve this issue. Um, David. This David, I think it's said that uh, it's sort of moved beyond these endless process discussions, but here's, here's one that I think we have to have. Uh, and I'm not sure that a full committee is the place to uh, draft language for this, that it, it's much easier to, to have someone or someones uh, come up with that. And well, I'm not volunteering. <laughs> so Anne is but, volunteering. No, Anne's not volunteering. So, you know, all those in favor? <laughs> not <opposed. laughs> My question okay. is, it feels as if we are creating a new something that must have been worked on by somebody else previously. I mean, aren't there people out there who do this sort of thing? I mean, What's the city doing? Why are we having to come up with this kind of management language when we, we don't? I don't think we have to. I think that's the that's what we heard. I think it's really a, a thing we can do if we feel. The, I think the city said that we have to. I guess do something, but I think that the degree <laughs> that to which we have to create a belt, you know, some airtight. Uh, Double, um, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> you know, double confirmation of state law is, is really up to us. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think that the city ordinance is in place. If, if we uh, are just handing out the guideline with a requirement to obey the law uh, and the city ordinance and specifically make note of that to the people that are doing the work that you must obey it. I mean, we have no enforcement arm of this committee. We have no, no we have, we have well, one, one legal arm, but the city, I mean, the city has that. So I, I think, I don't think it's our job to claw back money uh, from it, but we could, you know, say that we expect all the contractors to act within the city ordinance in this regard. And we can make a special note of that. Um, that's my feeling on it is that we call attention to it and we emphasize it, but we're not the enforcing agency. I think, uh, the crux of this is that we don't have any relationship with those contractors. So it just becomes a very hairy. Or almost a toothless. What is the city expecting us to do? That's, that's all there. <laughs> Basically, it was the city council resolution was to take it up, but it wasn't. It wasn't. You will pass a, uh, a provision that will 
have A, B, C, and D, it was to take it up, and then it was just left up to us in the area that we oversee as to what to do with it. I would like some accountability because I think all the wishy-washy language about we're pledged to do this and pledged to do that is just it's just that it's just words. And I think I think again tonight we heard about um, one in four contractors are you know it's been documented that are mis are misclassifying their workers. So that's going on here. That we can't, you cannot ignore that, that that's not going going on because it is. We don't know how much. This is an attempt to address that. That said, the CPC is not the gendarme of of enforcing this stuff. But I think there ought to be some <coughs> accountability. I, it's not like the CPC is going to have some part-time special investigator that's going to be out there discovering this stuff. But when this stuff is brought forward, and it will be. Um, whether it's the Attorney General's office or an individual or a group like the Carpenters Union that was here tonight, we should have some kind of mechanism to deal with it. And I think at this point, I mean, I'm in favor of a subcommittee to, to explore that with the city solicitor and whoever else wants to get involved with this, because I, I think it's an important issue. I, I think we, I think, all too often, we, as a, as a city, we think we're, I think, we think we're better than we are. And I think that UMass study on wage theft in the restaurant industry, which had its faults, was hardly a perfect study. But I think that exposed a lot of what's going on. And guess what? It's still going on. Mm -hmm. And I think we ought to have some mechanism in place to deal with it. And I don't know exactly how that shapes up, but I think there ought to be some accountability and not just, a, oh, well, don't do that again. When you say mechanism, do you mean language in a contract in, or do you mean an actual mechanism? We've been doing, we've been doing conditions in these, in these proposals, and I think there ought to be some kind of a wage theft condition in these contracts that we're doing. I don't, I, I'm, I'm still relatively new to this, but I don't think a lot of the a lot of the folks that um, bring these proposals before us should be able to say, "Oh well, gee, I didn't know that was going on," because that's how it works in the construction industry. The, the everybody looks the other way until they find something that can stick, and and there's a lot of stuff that's known that happens. Um, and people get away with it, and people look the other way. And, and I think it would make, it's a better example for the uh, city of Northampton. You know, we, we, we present better to the rest of the state. I think we ought to set an example for the rest of the state. Um, and I just lost my train of thought with something that you said, Anne. Um, but oh, you said, aren't there other people that are doing these kinds of things? I think that's the kind of thing that it, that it a subcommittee should be able to really dive into this. And it's like, you know, there are other communities that have done um, wage theft components. What, so what have they done with regard to um, CPA funding? I don't know. I, I, I would like to know more. And if they haven't done anything, then maybe we're on, we're on, um, on new ground. And frankly, I'm all for it. Linda? Well, I come with a slightly different experience of having represented um, a developer. Um, and I, I, I agree that it is a problem. I have absolutely no issue with requiring the recipient of the funds to themselves um, certify that they are compliant with wage and hour laws and doing some clawback if they themselves directly are in violation of that. I have no problem asking the developer, recipient of the funds, to put in their contract with the contractor and require certification from the contractor. Where I'm struggling, though, from my experience, is having a clawback that reaches to the developer if the contractor 
does not do that because the only way for the developer, and here you're talking for affordable housing, usually a nonprofit that's got you know very little staff, the only way for them to actually figure out whether that's happening is to go and do on-site monitoring, interviews. Um, it's, it's, it's an intensive process. So there's no way for the developer absent that, and that's a whole new you know, requirement that you'd be putting on that developer, for that developer to really know what the contractor or the subcontractors are doing. And I'm troubled about uh, placing the, the recipient of the funds in that kind of precarious position where they're responsible for somebody else's behavior. And um, I mean, even though in theory perhaps they could then go to the developer or the, you know, then you're involving them in litigation and do they have the finances and the where with it, it, it's a whole, it's a whole mess. And the enforcement of this, there is somebody who's supposed to be doing the enforcement and the Commonwealth has chosen not to fund it sufficiently. I mean, there's a, um, the state is supposed to be paying some attention to this and we heard that part of the problem is because the resources haven't been put there. So um, it's kind of a taking the state's failing and sort of, well, where, who, who can we stick with this obligation now? Because there is a problem and we want a solution, but I'm not sure that the, that the sticking it on the developer who's doing something that we're supporting and doesn't control um, the miscreant here is, is really the right answer. I mean, it, I'm, I'm happy to have a subcommittee and, and, and uh, think about that some more and see if there are more things that can be done, but the ultimate stick of the clawback on the developer for the, for the mistake of others is, I just want you to know that's troubling to me. Uh, does anyone else have comments for our two co-chairs, uh, Jeff and Linda, of the way uh, uh, Notice how fast he is with that. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I guess one of the things that we got prior to our last meeting um, was this city of Hampton fair wage statement included in all contracts. Um, and my understanding is that that's what the city is going to be doing with regard to contracts that it lets, regardless of whether it's construction or otherwise. Um, but then I heard Councilor Klein saying that they were still tweaking the language, and I wasn't sure if that was in reference to this language here or something else. So, that, so I guess, I guess question, my, my, my first question is, do we actually know what the city's doing? And the follow-up to that would be, Assuming they've come to a conclusion over what it over what it is that they want they want to be doing as a city, um, what does it mean if we attempt to go beyond that? Um, I think we have to do at the very least what what uh, what the city does. We have to be in conformity with them. Um, I think probably for legal reasons. But then I raise the question: Where do we put ourselves if if our language is not identical to the city's? Um, and I don't know the answer to that. I just put it out there. So that language is in contracts currently. So everything that has, every contract that's been issued since uh, the mayor's executive order includes that new language. So last six weeks or whatever. Yeah. Kind of thing. yeah. Okay. And that language has not been tweaked at the, what we have or what we were given? No. Three not weeks ago. Notice. I mean, someone may be working on it. So do we? So we don't know what that. She said the executive order. Oh, right? okay. So and I'm I'm, I'm so lost on and on what the status of all those is at the city level. I just I'm just raising as a general issue this idea that you know I don't know what happens if we get out of out of step with whatever the city's doing as far as legal. So. I mean, it may be worthwhile to talk to the license commission because that's another group that has a lot of oversight over businesses or people that was also asked to look at this issue. Other folks want to weigh in on this? So one issue that has come up is to form a subcommittee 
to uh, try to get at some of the questions. Uh, is this a language the city is using? What if we go above and beyond that? Who else is doing this? What about the license commission? So there are a number of issues that, that folks could get at. And perhaps uh, uh, we've had a, an offer from a community person, uh, Lisa Clausen, to participate in this subcommittee as well. Are we allowed to do that? Or a subcommittee of this group could only be comprised of members of okay. this group. Yeah, but, but she could come to every single one of those meetings. meetings. So we would be the, or the subcommittee would, could hear from other folks as well, including Lisa, who, remember, gave us her memo with some more specific language that, that, that she was working on. Uh, so it, it seems to me that I'm hearing that a subcommittee would be the way to go. Is that, are, are people, yeah. yeah. I, I don't oppose that, but I, again, I'm going to restate it. I don't know why we would move forward with this until we know exactly what the city's going to do. Uh, and, and we don't know that, Sarah? Well, I haven't, we, I've distributed the mayor's executive order. Yeah. So uh, we think which, that's what? What's this? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, which was everything that, that the city was planning on doing at that point. But Councillor Quine indicated that there's some efforts, I'm not Sure by home. Oh, she didn't use the word tweaking, right? Yeah. Yeah. She, it sounds yeah. like it was going to be a revised. Yeah. That's what she said. You know, it, just for a second, I, mean, I keep looking back at, at what, what Nisa gave us with the four suggestions, or four suggestions for what we could do. And, and part of what I'm struggling with on the suggestions, for instance, is one of them was require the project to hire a clerk of works. So that means that when we fund a project with CPA money, yeah. We're also funding the hiring of a, a, a clerk of works, which now now we would have to get, you know, not five hundred thousand dollar requests for funds, but everything's going to have to sort of become magnified because we're going to throw new costs ourselves onto these projects. And I, I I hear the benefit of throwing that cost on because we really want to prevent wage theft, but I also struggle with that because that means that a nonprofit organization is going to have this. Some of this, some of this produces more costs to those organizations. And the Additionally, contractors, when they're faced with a provision in the contract that they're not familiar with or that is yeah. new, they say, "Okay, for five thousand dollars of that, and what it is." So there is, in a sense, a so they're going to charge up. Is what you're saying? Possibly. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to measure those things. I don't know if the cities, or if, or even if you would notice it. It, it, it depends what scale, I suppose. Um, but anything that adds risk to a contract, they're going to add money to. Right. So, so while each of these sounds great to prevent wage theft, what we would want to know on each one of these, for instance, is what's the financial impact of that on a potential applicant for a grant here? So, so the, we'll say, uh, say that line one more time. What is the financial impact? What's the potential financial impact? So, for instance, here's a proposal. Let's make sure that every project has to hire a clerk of works. What's the financial impact of that on every project that comes now in front of this committee? Well, if uh, later community hires uh, someone <laughs> yeah. to treat the, the invasive plants, do it's they then have to check on that contractor to make sure he's paying fair wages? So maybe yeah. hires is the wrong word. Maybe it's designates. Maybe yeah. they have somebody on there. Yeah. yeah, somebody on the. I mean, they've got a, they've got a legal services division there. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, they've got a lawyer, I'm yeah, sure I would do. bet, or two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the lawyer is not going to want to be doing the wage interviews, I mean, uh, yeah. uh, on uh, invasives for $3,000. I mean, So does it have a chilling effect on? Yeah. Sure. It, it, th there'll be costs added one way or the other, one way or the other. That's why I was suggesting that you can have Lathrop certify, and you could have Lathrop certify that the whoever it is that's applying the pesticides or whatever is is paying fair wages. But to go beyond that, um, to in any way have them determine right whether that certification is valid is, is I think, overreach. Okay, so I'm still struggling with uh, with how how language will be worked on. 
uh, is, is there a proposal out that would have to deal with a subcommittee? And we could, I mean, I, I, I think it's going to be all of these are really valid issues, but someone's going to have to draft language for us that we can then look at it and begin to pick apart. Uh, so, uh, uh, is there a, would anyone want to make a proposal that we form a subcommittee to draft wage theft language that would be included in all our contracts? The more I think about this, the more I think, I think Chris is on to something that this is really something the city should decide what they want the policy to be and tell us. This is a city ordinance, and if there's something that the city has decided that they want us as part of the city to incorporate, we can. If they don't, then it doesn't seem to be. I actually appreciate it the other way, that yeah. um, you know, the city is doing procurement and it deals with a set of things. We, we have a very different range of kinds of projects that we deal with, and so coming up with something that's appropriate to what we're doing, I may be different than, than what the city well, I think they might have, it sounds like they have sensitivity to that. I'm not solicitor for us. But they, they, I mean, what he's suggesting we do is different from what the city wants some sense uh, to But I, don't, I, I think I don't want the city telling us what they want us to do. I want us to decide what we think will work best for the, for the committee. I'm, I, I think it's good to know what the city is doing mm -hmm. As a, as a starting point. And we will solicit their input, through the, the solicitor and all. Yeah. Any other thoughts on this? The problem with the subcommittee is I'm, I'm not sure that there's an, a, a, been enough here yet to, and I'm, to really send off a subcommittee to, to do something. Don't we first have to know what it is the city's doing? We haven't even got language. If we haven't even got language, apparent, which apparently we haven't got, we haven't got that tied down. So everything the city's doing is in the executive order? Issue everything is, regardless of what she said about tweaking. What, everything that's been enacted is, yes. is in the executive order. And there, there may be some efforts to change that, but the executive order is what's in place currently. Has the city allocated any, has there a talk about allocating any funds to enforcing that? Right. Yeah, I mean, everything in the executive order sort of places the burden not with the city, which makes <laughs> sense because it, it's, right. it's difficult to try and enforce all of these things. It's vendors and contractors. So it's, it's reporting, yeah. basically, that, that they're complying with all the applicable laws. Is there someone in the city who it would be best to talk to about this? I, it depends on the particular question. And if we get really nuanced in what we're looking for, it would be different people. Okay, so there's no set answer to that? No. I mean, the, the mayor and the city solicitor put together the executive and, and that's what's being implemented. Do you have su suggestions on how to proceed? I mean, it, it, it really is up to the committee how, how far they want to delve into have, this. Have we ever put a fallback on any restriction that we put on any contract? I mean, the farthest we go is saying, if, if you don't place a CR on your property, we won't release the funds. Um, but never, never taking the funds and then taking them back. No, this is, this is no that's, of, that's, that's hard to do. Really. So we've so never done that. Right. Mm -hmm. And we don't have a mechanism. If, if we'd already given the money, for example, to the Council of Governments, and then we said, hey, you didn't put your conservation restriction on, give us your money back. I don't know. I don't, How would we make them do that? I know mean, the, the money would have already been spent. So right. we, we've always framed it that they, we won't release the funds until the conditions have been Right, like but this is a different type of like the restrictions on affordable housing. Same thing. But that's why I think one of the recommendations was that you release that you partial release and then uh, you hold funds. I mean, it's like that You're holding funds until such time as you know, Lisa called it retainage. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you hold yeah. some back until it's some in escrow. Right. Right. Yeah, escrow. And you have to borrow the money. Well, and right, and that's what I was saying again. With the groups who are coming here and trying mm -hmm. to get money, it's real 
-hmm. Well, most of the groups that are build, building things of sub significant projects, our money is not significant. Well, it's significant, but it's, yeah, not, but it's not the majority major. of it. It's not mm -hmm. going to. The retainage of 10% of 10% is, is not. Well, that kind the, of retainage, yes, but if you don't release the money till the end of the project, then it becomes. Well, retainage generally, and a construction project generally is about 10%. Right. 10 right. And, and with the larger projects that later involve construction, CPA funds usually only go towards acquisition. So it would be an interesting discussion whether we wanted to apply acquisition funds later to a project where our funding is not involved. I, I don't, I'm not quite sure how that would work. Like with the half project for the lumber yard, our money is for acquisition only and doesn't mm -hmm. involve any construction. Mm -hmm. how, how many of our projects have involved construction? I, I just, I tried to go back quite, to the R. Quite a few. Yeah. I mean, all the historic right, um, right, preservation right. stuff, yeah, all of La Park, oh, yeah, and you're all right. of Florence Fields. Florence Fields, yeah. So, right. um, the library, I mean, it's, yeah. Pulaski, I mean, it's a court yeah, management. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It, is there someone, and <laughs> Jeff, who are interested in, in or, I mean, a subcommittee is a good point if no one wants to uh, be I'd, on that. I'd be happy yeah. to, be, to be part of it. I don't want to be the only one, but uh, I'd be happy to be part of it. I really do feel like I need more, I don't have my own clarity yet, and I certainly don't feel yeah. A single voice coming from this group. No, I don't think there is. It's the right. challenge. But I'm happy yeah. to be participate if we get to that point. And Jeff is nodding his head. I'm, a, I'm in. Yeah, I'd be okay. happy to explore this more. So, Jeff, and not that we've agreed to have a subcommittee, but if we did. We're in the shopping cart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for express checkout. Let's do <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this might sway people. If we make a subcommittee, that committee is subject to the open meeting law mm -hmm. and would need to be posted and have minutes. And that was one of my follow-up questions. All of that kind of stuff. If yeah. a few people just wanted to do some research on their own and then bring it back to the full group, whatever they're doing wouldn't be subject. Okay. Even uh, if they did it, even if they had coffee together. <laughs> even if what? Even if they had coffee together. That, no. Yes, it just happened to come up. And if people have specific questions about city-related stuff, I'm happy to get all of the answers to that. Can we, as a, not a problem. can we as a group task individuals to look at specific issues? I mean, you can tell. I, I don't know if you can make them do it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, like, like, for instance, yes, I'm, more, yes, I'm, more than hap I'm more than happy to do, you know, materials research. Yeah, then that's fine. And then bring it back to the, right. the full group for discussion. So we're not in violation of open. Yeah, but actually getting together and having an agenda and doing the research together would, would be a, an actual subcommittee. It would be minutes. And we should all that. You, you keep talking about this as construction projects, but it really applies to every project. It, it could, or it, could, it I mean, depends the, on what the, 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 the stained glass that's, restoration yeah. and yeah. everything. Yeah. I guess that's a type of construction, but. Yeah. I mean, even well, the open space land acquisition, it doesn't. So we're out right by purchasing right. land. That's about it, but everything else. Well, what about the conservation uh, fund? You know, to make sure that the, the trust attorney, you know, the, I mean, the title attorneys are. are oh, I'm not going to worry about this. <laughs> it is a universal uh, requirement. So. Okay. so I'm confused how to move forward. Do people have suggestions? I mean, if we create a subcommittee, the next subcommittee needs to be beholden to the open meeting law, which makes sense. So could we perhaps create a list of what do we know, what do we want to know? And when we figure out the what do we want to know, so let's just each take something and go out and find out the what do we want to know and put it all back on the table at yeah. one of our regular meetings. Yes. That seems good. That's could good. I suggest that we do some um, like for instance, I need to I need to delve into the executive order thoroughly, mm -hmm. um, and also, having done that, look look at as a starting point Lisa's list of suggestions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think that really is all there is to look at from the city side. Just the executive order and that contract language. There isn't there isn't anything else that's going on besides that. Yeah, but I haven't even done that. So I, I mean, I would I would to the rest of the rest of the room to at least do that part of it. 
we ought to figure out what this tweaking is. Yeah. yeah. And, and what, what that means. So, so there's a what do we want to know. We want to know if the executive order is going to change and how it's going to change. And is that Sarah sent it to get for us? And yeah. Just have some There's one done. Um, can we, the way, can we get some, I mean, can someone from housing way in? Someone, someone who would be affected by this. I think it would be really interesting to hear there. Yeah, it would be interesting to hear Joanna's yeah. thoughts on this. Um, so I'd be happy to call Joanna. Is it Joanne or Joanna? Joanne. Joanne. So Brian called Joanne. And went, okay. Um, would someone like to talk to the, is there a chair of the license commission? What does the license commission do? They issue mostly that, alcohol licenses. Yeah. That's, that's the big thing. But it's all it's other kinds of victual permitting as well, that kind of stuff. Okay. But I'll, I'll talk to them. Great. Okay. So I'm. Let me see. We have Tass here, Chris license, Brian, Joanne. Um, I'm spacing on the last name. What is it? Campbell. Campbell. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, um, actual ordinance. we think of other tasks that we could bring back to our next meeting? Well, maybe our own proposals, thoughts of proposals of what we'd like to see. <coughs> Say that again, Linda. Um, that we, I mean, we're, we're sort of floundering here, and I've sort of put something together in my own mind, which I'll express in a minute, but maybe if each of us could kind of bring what we, how we would like to see this go. Okay. Not this, not the process but the actual so each member drafting their own language essentially is that yeah. okay. well that doesn't take out the draft mm -hmm. thinking about it coming with okay. so we can have a lot of tasks on this one this is one of these process things we could meet all summer about mm -hmm. no we wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> we know we no we would is it uh, other things that we could bring to the to the next meeting. There seems to be some momentum around this issue, which I don't want to take away from the validity of it as an issue. But there's all kinds of state laws that surround construction and contracts and all sorts of things. I mean, child labor should be attached. Provisions about child, I mean, there's all kinds of things. Seat belts, hard hats. Everything, smoking, yeah. right, right? Smoking. Smoking. Yeah. And it just seems to me so somewhat arbitrary, this, not to disparage the well-intentioned, yeah. you know, thinking behind it. You know, we could go through the whole Massachusetts code and, and add provisions for everything. But these things are state laws already. Okay. And if we're adding something, are we at? Are we well, we don't I know what we're doing. That's my frustration. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. Sort of along those lines. I think that's why I have no, I, I think the, the notion of um, uh, not allowing business to be done with the contractor who has violated this. And I would actually suggest that the look back period be expanded from three years to something like 10, so it's got some mm. some real meaning to it. So if if you're one of the unlucky few who's been caught, um, it, 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 it trails after you for a, for a while and you don't, you don't get off so quickly. And that there be the certification required, but that the enforcement piece so, so that you make it clear what you expect. I don't mind the, it, yes, it is state law, but I don't mind the repetition to saying, yes, I'm, I understand that I, I, I need to comply with this law in order to get these funds. It's important to you, I get it. Um, it's the moving the enforcement piece. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the whole clawback. And so that, that I think is missing. So some of us have tasks to do. All of us have, have thoughts to think. Uh, is there any 
other discussion on how to proceed with this. We meet again when? Uh, next week. A week from today. So that's May the third. May already. Uh, and what else is theoretically on our agenda? I will put together council resolutions for the recommendations we discussed, and that's it. Okay. So is it is that an appropriate amount of time to revisit this? Could we do our tasks in a week? Uh, let's. Well, we could just see where we get in a week. Uh, I'm out of town from now until Monday night, so I don't know how I'm going to get behind that, but Tuesday. I'll be here May 3rd, but I've sent some language to say that. Okay. We, we will revisit this and see. I mean, this is not yeah. something where, yeah, I understand. Um, that we have to accomplish in our next meeting. We'll do the best we can and see what we've accumulated and perhaps defer it until the fall. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the way the way that it is, knowing that this co this contractual language is included in all of the contracts. So if something has been done, mm -hmm. it, it's, it is in there. It's not in uh, our contract. It yes. isn't yet. It, it doesn't have to be. We yeah, could add it. That's one of the things. That I think that's what we were told. Oh, was I thought it was in did, every contract. We did not have there. to use that. It's in, it's in the city's contract. Oh, I did not know that. OK. So that's something that we could consider. It, we could consider. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion on this? Uh, last on the agenda, as always, other business not foreseen when agenda was published. Pat ourselves on the back. Mm -hmm. Another successful round. Mm -hmm. And is our motion to adjourn? Move. Okay, second. Second. Rouse. Yes, sir.